this week uh, to uh, talk to my brothers, <laughs> uh, my brothers in ministry. Um, so I, I, I don't even know who to introduce first. Let me let me go to William, William Carter, and um, and Charles Ryan. I'm just so excited to have y'all. First of all, how y'all doing? Man, it's great day in the neighborhood, man. Yeah, man. Hey, great, great. Glad to be here. <laughs> yes, sir. Listen, I'm I'm excited to, that you guys are that that you guys are on with me today. Um, l- let me first introduce William Carter. Uh, for those of you all that don't know, William Carter is a a musician, prolific musician, an awesome writer. Um, he's an author uh, of of the book, The Five P's. Eat your P's. Eat your P's. Eat your P's. I'm sorry. Yeah. Eat your P's. And he he I I was reading some excerpt excerpts from the book. Powerful stuff. You all need to you all need to uh, make sure you you download uh, William's book. Um, man, w- William, we go back a, a long way, a long time. Some years. I don't even remember. <laughs> I always knew you. Don't tell it all. Don't tell it. <laughs> but but we man, we we go so far back. But it's it's a pleasure to have you on. How you doing? I'm great, man. It's yeah. it's, it's a blessing to be here, man. I thank God for for you, uh, for your ministry, for this platform, man. This is phenomenal. This is awesome. I love how you bring in music and ministry, you know, together. Uh, in this season, it has the ability to heal, it has the ability to help us, and it's such an awesome gift that I think we have yet to really tap into the fullness of. So I'm excited, man. I hope we can uh, definitely cover some good ground today. Oh, we what definitely will. Do. Yeah. We, we definitely will. Um, my, my other guest, uh, and, and not to be biased, he is my cousin. And uh, for those of you all who don't know how I got started um, as a steel guitar player, you're looking at probably the the major reason why so my grandmother and this happened I don't, I don't know if you remember this charles my grandmother a long time ago um i had a black uh double neck gibson um steel and um we were in uh we were in we were i think we were at your mom's house mm-hmm. we were at your mom's house and yeah. my grandmother was so adamant about making sure i stayed on that steel and and got the proper instruction that I needed. So, so William, I got one lesson. One. One lesson. lesson. Wow. One lesson. (laughs) And it came from this guy right here, Charles Ryan. He sat down with me and see, and it blew my mind because I didn't know. So so for those of you all that don't know and are are joining, make sure that you are, um, that you like this post, share this post. I have, I have two geniuses on, on, on with me today. Charles Ryan, he plays, he played guitar. So when I was young, he, you know, when I was coming up as a drummer, <laughs> most of y'all don't know that he played guitar. I remember, that was, that I remember that. Too. And his father was a guitarist, he quartet music. So, you know, I knew that, you know, about, but I'm like, you know, everybody knows him as, you know, just the, the singer, the, the preacher, you know, the writer, the choir, you know, choir director, choir teacher, you know, choir, Charles has just been doing this for years, mm-hmm. but when he played the steel and gave me my first lesson, I was blown away. Like, <laughs> who does this? And does it so well that even today he's like, don't forget who, who taught you. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, man? <laughs> the beautiful day in the neighborhood, man. You know, that's, um, um, I almost got teared up, you know, cause uh, to, um, to think back that far really, yeah, you know, let you become humble to the fact that man is doing this work is rewarding to see not yourself but to see others who have um, took the gift and, and and really ran with it. And so I'm proud to be here. I'm proud to be on your platform. Yeah. Um, you didn't tell the story though about <laughs> when you before you became a steel player, mm. we used to play the pots and the pans at my grandmother's house. Sure and did. you were the one playing drums yeah. before you started playing steel. Yeah. So <laughs> Tell it all. Tell yeah. <laughs> I, I think that's noteworthy, you know? Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> because, you know, the, 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 faucet, of, the faucet of music, mm-hmm. You know, right now you see one 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 view of it. Right. But 
you know, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead of the conversation or not, but yeah. Yeah. um skilled music uh, musicians yeah. have knowledge of all music. Right. Not just the music you play. Mm -hmm. And with that, then you have the opportunity to know um how it all comes together. Right. You know, but if you've just been stuck on your one platform, you don't have a real appreciation for others and what they bring to the game. So right. um it's that's 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 the irony behind skilled musicians and musicians that know how to play. Wow. Said by the the doctor himself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so humbled, man, to have, have you two guys on. You, you guys are you're, you're trendsetters within the generation um, when it comes down to music, music ministry, um, when it comes down to preaching, teaching, um, and, um, and you're young. Um, how, how, did that, how did that transition? William, William I'll start with you. How, how did, you know, growing up in church, we, we all grew up in church, and, and as Charles just stated, you know, it, it, it transcended church for us. You know, it, we, we were doing this at home. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> we were doing Absolutely. this at home. Definitely. You know, so, so people think, you know, we, we come to church and they see us the way they see us in church. But actually, this was, we, we were having prayer services at home. That's a way of life. We, we saw this stuff modeled mm -hmm. and, 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 and done in real time at yeah. home. So, yeah. so how, how did it really start with you, William? You're absolutely right, man. It definitely started at home. Uh, mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize that uh, my brother, my big brother, uh, Victor, had a, had a big influence on me musically. Wow. Um, he was our local church choir director. Uh, he was a guitar player himself. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, the thing about it was he started that excellence at home. Um, we had a group, me, my brother, and uh, my two sisters, and we used to sing a cappella. I remember. And, uh, my voice hadn't changed yet, so I was the soprano. <laughs> and they would stand me up in a chair, you know, so that I would be on the same level as them. And, and we would sing. So we started learning music and harmonies with nothing. You know, there were no instruments, you right. know. And the choir, you know, we used to sing a cappella. And so I had a, um, a natural ear for understanding and dissecting harmonies. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know everybody couldn't hear harmony mm -hmm. i didn't know that because you know other people hear i guess a beautiful blend but i would hear three distinct parts right. you know and and could 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 replicate each one of them and so man you know by the time we got to the church scene my story is i, I had started playing keyboard just mm -hmm. by ear a little bit i could play in one key um and that was that was it okay. and uh general elder evelyn campbell came to nashville and did a revival wow. and in the middle of that revival um she asked the pastor and asked my mom if she could anoint my hand she said the holy ghost told her to anoint and pray for my hand wow. and so she called me up i was about nine years old and i remember she put the oil on my hands and uh she started praying and I remember shaking all over my body. I remember this tingling in my fingers. Wow. Man, and I didn't have anybody's Holy Ghost. I'm going somewhere with this. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't have the Holy Ghost. Right. But I was shaking, I was crying, my fingers were, were tingling. Mm -hmm. And they never stopped tingling. I mean, when we went home, when I got into bed, my fingers were still tingling. Right. And I woke up the next morning, man, and I pulled out my keyboard and it was like a veil had been lifted. Wow. The Lord began to help me figure out how to play in other keys. And it got, by the time I was 11, I was over the choir and anything on the radio, if I heard it once or twice, man, I could just play it. You know, it was just something that God gave me. And people would sit beside me and watch me play and go, how did you put those chords together? How did you, I don't know, cause I just kind of vibed off of you know, my ear and what I feel in the spirit. And, and, right. and you know, as a musician, I don't really understand people that play outside of you know, tapping into the spirit rap because the whole thing started out spiritually for me. It's just one other point I want to make. One other point I want to make. This is one of the reasons I think it's so important that we allow those who have a gift of music to be cultivated and use it in the church, whether they're saved or not. Right. Listen, I'm a witness. God gave me my gift before he gave me the Holy Ghost. All yeah. right. 
Yes. And and it was anointed. Contrary right. to popular belief, it was definitely mm -hmm. anointed. It was definitely effective. You know, and so when God gives you that gift and you have a desire to use it for the upbuilding of his kingdom, that should be enough, you know, for the body of Christ to embrace. I think it's very important. Now, this, this is you, man, thank you so much for bringing that out. That, that you really raised a lot of um, attention to that area. And this is probably the 18th, 19th episode I've done. Um, this live I've actually done and every single one um, of the musicians that I talk to, if, if not almost just a similar story of having their hands anointed or to some degree having being prayed over and coming out of that experience different. On another level. You're, you're, it's, it, you've confirmed it once again in, in, in what, what that does and, and how that makes the gift just excel even further. So, wow, Charles, t t tell me, tell me about where you, where you started. I, I, I have a clue, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, as was mentioned before, my, my father was um, a well sought after lead guitarist uh, in the Broward County area, um, mm -hmm. sung with many quartet groups there, and so um, his. It wasn't his dream. It was my mom's dream that I learned to play the guitar uh, like my dad. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad looked at my fingers and he said, they wanted to be too fat. And uh, they weren't long enough to, uh, to cover the frets. Okay. And, uh, but mama insists um, that I be taught. And so they, my first guitar was an electric guitar. Uh, within six months of getting it, I tore it up, you know, yeah. no value in it. Mm. And then they bought me an acoustic guitar. Okay. Again, no value. My dad is like, we're not spending any more money on this guy. You know, he, he, he won't take it serious and all of that kind of stuff. But mama was very insistent. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they bought me another guitar. And this time it sunk in. Yeah. And um, so the guitar experience grew from that because my daddy taught me to play the guitar. I was taught by my dad mm. how to play the guitar. Mm. Um, meanwhile, there was a piano mm. in the house. <laughs> Nobody in the house played the piano. My oldest sister, Cheryl, she does play for Fort Lauderdale now. She, you know, she had some skills on it. In fact, she even went. I think she took a couple classes in in school, mm -hmm. um, but there was a piano in the house. Nobody played the piano. Wow! And one day, um, around 12, 11, 12, I just decided to sit down to the piano. Never had anyone to teach me how to form chords. Wow! My first chord that I formed, I didn't even know the key. <laughs> it was E flat. Okay. So I learned how to play E flat. Uh, like William, I could hear music mm -hmm. and I knew what matched. And so the gift of the piano came um, directly from God. Wow. It, that wasn't taught. My daddy could play piano, but he never taught me how to play the piano. He taught me how to play the lead guitar. That I knew how to play because he taught me. But the gift, but the, the piano, I learned through through divine intervention, right? how to play. I'll tell you a quick story. So my sister buys this brand new keyboard mm -hmm. from the Lotta Hill Mall. There was a store in the Lotta Hill Mall that my mom and dad bought her a nice keyboard with the speaker and all. Mm -hmm. With the purchase of the equipment came a free lesson. Okay. Now, by this time, I had already developed how to play piano. Right. My sister knew how to play, but I was developing. So they thought it would be better for me to take the music class and not my older sister. So I went to the class two times. Y'all see my fingers? Two times I went to the class. <laughs> and the second time that I went to the class, we were supposed to play, I think, when the Saints go marching in. And we were supposed to read the music. Okay. So I sit the music on top of the piano 
and I start playing when the saints go marching in. And I looked at the music just as if I was reading the music. And this is the God helping truth. I sat, I sat on the piano because everyone in the class had to read the music and play. I sat on it. I played it as if I was reading the music. And when I finished, I said, hey, 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 hey. They were excited that I played the music. Nobody realized that I was playing it by ear. 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 And memory. Mm -hmm. And memory. And that was the last day I went to that class. <laughs> Charles, I did the same thing, man. My mom put me in music lessons. I'm supposed to be learning the music. Yeah. My, mine was what a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. And I'm I'm playing it and I'm looking at the notes. Yes. Yeah. Thinking I'm reading those notes, but I'm yeah. remembering exactly what she played. It's like yeah. I couldn't get past that nah. barrier. I yeah. understand some notes. I do. Yeah. Right. And I can I can kind of muddle through and figure out sheet music. But once yeah. it's in my head, I can't separate it. That that was the last piano class I took that I had band, um, but, you know, and so the platform for church, you know, it, it, it taught me to be very attentive. Now, to move the conversation on, I'll tell you how um, impacting the gift is, because I'm not just talking about what I learned and developed over years. I'm talking about the impact of a gift. Right. Um, so being in the House of God Church, you know, we sing repetitious songs. Mm -hmm. We sing songs, our hymns, virtually our repetitions. You know, you don't have to be a music major or learn music to tip typically play in one of our services. Right. You just got to be able to have a developed ear. Yeah. Right. So the older I got, the more demand it was for um, musicians to play outside of our church sector. Right. And for a while I did that. And even now, I, you know, based upon the need, I may assist some of the community churches here in this area. Right. But what I, I've come to is that there are a lot of churches that sing hymns that require reading of music. Right. right. And for particularly uh, the, the African American, African, African Methodist Episcopal Church, the AMEs, uh -huh. for which I did a lot of playing for at a period of time, they sang a lot of hymns. Yes. Um, the Adventists who I played for here in this area, they sing a lot of hymns. So how do you, how do you work right. with a group of people who sings hymn and you can't read a hymn? Right. So the, 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 the gift kicks in and say, well, tell me what hymns y'all plan to sing this Sunday, right? So I uh, get the hymns, don't pull, a, don't pull a fast one on me now because you already know I don't read music. Don't pull a fast one. So what you tell me is what I'm going to study. Right, right. So I get on the internet and I find the hymn. Listen to the hymn. Mm -hmm. And we have to be able to articulate that hymn in our ear, in our head. So when we get to the church, mm -hmm. we can play that hymn for the day. That's wow. it. And um, so I, I said it's the gift. Because even though you learn the music, mm -hmm. it is a gift that picks up that keen sense of hearing. You understand? Right. It's the gift because you can hear music and still can't play it. Right. True. Right. But you got to have the gift that gives you the music, and then at the same time, applicate what you what you've um, you've learned. So. Um, all of my life, I've, I've been, in, been in the church. I've been around music, um, um, guitars, um, you, you name it. You know, Dante, we, we come from a musically inclined yes. family. And yes, um, as you do, William, um, we, we, uh, we all come from musically inclined families, but we also come from gifted families. Right. We're not just musicians. William, we're not just musicians. We are gifted 
musicians, which separates our, our talents from the skills. Wow. Yeah. Can you yeah. say that one more time? It, it, it does. It separates our talent from, from the skills. skills. And wow. you have people that have talent, but they don't have skills. Wow. Yeah. And it, it's, it's not because of experience. Okay, because there's some people that have been playing music longer than we have collectively, right? Still don't have skill, right? Mm -hmm. They've got talent, mm -hmm. but they don't have skill, which goes back to the argument William made about you know people who are not, um, quote unquote, saved, right? You have some musicians who are not saved who have more skills than some of the ones who call themselves saved. And listen, listen to me, by skill, I mean have the ability to flow in a service. Yes. Mm -hmm. Versus use their talent in the service. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? There's a difference. And, and for many years, um, people that played with me, particularly here in South Carolina, they, they call me the rude person because <laughs> I did a lot of yelling. Yeah. I pulled a lot of people off the drums in the middle of the service. Yeah. Stopped a lot of musicians from playing only because they were using their talent mm. and they were not using their skills. Because skills allow you to tap into the flow of the spirit. Your talent would just allow you to just play. You just, you just, mm -hmm. you just playing your chords, you know. Yeah, showcasing. you're showcasing. You're Thank showcasing. You. Let's just call it what it is. It is showcasing. It's showcasing. And so to be able to interpret what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, that comes from skill. And I use the word skill because the Bible talks about skillfully playing. So you mm -hmm. so you're getting ready to go where I was getting ready to take take you because because that that I'm so glad you said that. You know, there's a difference between talent and, and skill. Yeah. Um, and, and for those of you that are watching on Facebook, please like and share this post. Um, we really are diving in deep with uh, William Carter and Charles Ryan. And uh, man, so, 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 so let's, let's continue to talk about that. You know, we talk about this often in church, you know, having someone skilled, having someone that, that knows. It's a difference between a musician, like you said, that's talented and that really knows, um, that is skilled and really knows how to flow, you know. And, 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 and you, 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 you two, and especially William, you, you brought it up. You don't have to be saved to be skilled. You know, um, how to, there are a lot of musicians who are watching. There are a lot of musicians who will probably watch this afterward. And they, they are probably in that predicament where they're not, they may not be saved, but they're skilled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, we, don't need, we, we, don't need, we don't need the musicians to watch this. We need the pastors and leaders. That's, that's what we need because they need to be able yeah. to decipher who is skilled and who is talented. Because there's a difference. Yeah, but they, may, they may not be able to decipher that. And that's where we get the problem. They may not be able to. And so that's why we have the problem that we have. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. Well, well one, of, one, of the, one, of the, one of the issues, have you ever been in a service mm -hmm. and the music was paramount, you know, everybody is playing at a high skill level and you're looking around and you're wondering, you know, why is the spirit not flowing here? You know, what, what is wrong? What is going on? A lot of times what hinders you from tapping into the spiritual portion is your motives. Your right. motives. And a lot of people are playing because they want the audience to be in awe of their skill. Right. You know, they want people to dance and shout because of their skill. But when Retainer. God has really anointed you to play that music, you want his agenda to get across. You right. want people to be saved. You want hearts to be broken. And you don't care if that come through Ivan's drum beat, you know, right. <laughs> or somebody thumping on. You'll stop playing if you need to. Me and right. Charles will right. jump up and dance in a minute. It's, right. not, it's right. not about the keyboard itself. Right. And so that has to be your prayer. That has to be your motivation. Every time you sit down on that instrument, I don't care what's going on. It's never about me. It's right. about we, you right. know, and I, 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 I used to wonder why a lot of 
uh, stringed musicians enjoyed me being on the keyboard versus sometimes some other people. Right. But I never, I never would seek to assert myself. I'm just right. looking for every hole. Right. And every yeah. time there's a hole, Carter's going to fill that hole. Right. You right. know? And so when you get to these minor hymns and they don't know what's going on, okay, that's when I kick in. When the right. choir right. is there, that's when I kick in. Right. If they you. got it and it's flowing and I don't see a hole, you may not even realize Carter right. is there. That's right. exactly so, right. Back you know, up. And so it's about us working together as a unit. Right, and, and you you got to do that for people to feel something in the service. Yeah, it, the, the, the majority of the conflict, though, that comes with the actual service and musician is not having a spirit sensitive person. Mm. We're holding this church, and all we care about is shouting. Mm -hmm. That's all we care about is dancing. Mm -hmm. And so we, we, we've got to make the crowd dance, but spiritually sensitive people who are skilled players will recognize that there are times when we need to lay low from the dance or from the, the jubilee and kick in a, in a, a praise or kick in a worship. Right. Mm -hmm. But that comes with being skilled spiritually. Mm. So now you have you have your gift. You have your gift. Right. But unless you have the spirit influence, and you can have that without being saved. Yeah. I, I, I mean, yeah. If, listen, you listen to these sets that other people have with these musicians, and the minute they finish with this set, you know, they governing down uh, MD 2020 and popping up <laughs> mollies and all this other stuff. Yes, sir. But the music is spot on spiritually. They know how to usher in the presence of the Lord. There's yeah. somebody who doesn't slob and mess up the shirt calling Jesus and say, I'm saved, sanctified, but the Holy Ghost, <clears throat> and you can't even articulate. When is the best time to do a drive, to do a run, or to lay low and right. let somebody else kick in? Yeah. yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't have that. A lot it's, of people do not have and that. That is why. That is why, from the perspective of not only a musician, mm -hmm. so I'm getting ready to shift now. Mm -hmm. Not only from the perspective of a musician, but from the perspective of a preacher, mm -hmm. yeah. you have got to have skilled players. Yes. You got to have skilled players on sets because it will make preaching easier. Mm. Yes, it does. It, and, and if you got, listen, if you got the wrong musician while you preaching, Bubba, you, I told a group one time, I said, man, y'all, y'all, y'all making me work too hard. That's bad. <laughs> That's <laughs> just, I mean, it was, it was horrible, man. Wow. Um, and so, again, having skilled musicians, yeah. you know, regardless to what I feel like their life living is, um, really puts things in perspective for the church where we'll be able to, you know, move into that that realm where, where miracles can happen. Yeah. Well, when, you, when you play from your heart, God receives that, period. It doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. And I got I to gotta share this because I was in a revival. This is when I was a teenager. Okay. Yeah. I was in a revival in Florida. And this is when I was running from my call to the ministry. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord showed me some things mm -hmm. in that revival. Mm -hmm. And one thing that happened, there was a musician. I won't call this person's name. There was a musician. Um, who wanted to play the steel guitar in that revival, all right? Okay. The musician was unsaved, okay? General Elder Lizzie Cooper was running the revival. Mm. She said, let him come, let him play. Okay. People were not happy with that decision, but she pulled rank because she was the evangelist for that revival, right. all right? And uh, man, the Lord was working in that revival. By Friday night, the anointing was so high, 
we seeking around the altar, you know, I'm helping some of my friends get saved. People are receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. And we're in that service, and I mean, the music is rocking. Right. And all of a sudden, you know, when the seeker is really, really getting over that hump, you know, you want that music to just soar to the next level. Right. And I noticed the steel had stopped playing. You know, I'm around the altar. I turn around and look, and the steel player is under conviction. Wow. Mm-hmm. Everybody goes over there, all right? The musician came through with the Holy Ghost that night. The whole service took a shift. Mm-hmm. And when he testified, he thanked Elder Cooper for allowing him to play the music because if she had not allowed him to play the music, he said he wouldn't have come to the revival, period. He wouldn't have been there. Wow. And if he had not been there, he wouldn't have received his blessing. Wow. Okay, his- so I, I want to shift. I want to shift right, right, right where you are. That's powerful, William. That 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 testimony, and that's that's gonna bless somebody. Um, I, I know there are gonna be thousands of people who watch this um feed and, and watch this video. And um, I'm asking you all that are out on Facebook and and um and watching us live, like and share this post. Um again, I'm with um Charles Ryan, William Carter. This this is some good stuff. Um so 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 right where you were, William, and I'm I'm so glad even Charles, you brought up a point, you know. Guys uh, popping molly, smoking, whatever. Come in though, and, and can effectively run your service. William, you just you just said is you know you witnessed a musician who was not saved, who was not you know filled with the with the gift of the Holy Ghost and and all that, and and came into a revival, and at the end got saved, got delivered, but it was because a leader gave him a chance and an opportunity. So I, I want to make that shift. Mm-hmm. in my conversation right there, because we, we have a lot of leaders. There are a lot of leaders who, who are following me, who watch this feed. They, um, some don't have good relationships with the, with the musicians that I, you know, I've had as guests on here, but they watch me. You know, they, 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 don't, they don't talk to me, but I know they're watching, okay? <laughs> so one of the things I, I want to talk about, you, you two are pastors. You two are pastors. You, you, you've dealt with things from a uh, logistical level as a musician with other musicians, even coming into ministry, young into ministry, um, dealing with musicians, knowing the pros, the cons, you've seen them high, you've seen them, you know, Holy Ghost feel, you, we've seen them in all states. How do we as leaders effectively lead musicians who, who, who have a desire to want to be better, who have a desire to, to, to want to uh, 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 hone their craft better, but moreover, to have a, a, a leader that they can actually embrace as a leader, because there are not too many Coopers around. If well, you- the thing about it is you, 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 have to, you have to remain humble, okay? Humility has to be there, and, and a leader who does not re- lead out of humility is going to have problems anyway, okay? And so some of that stuff is pride. Let, can we just go ahead and be honest and be real about it? Say it. We got pastors who fall short. Right. I've fallen short, you know, but can still get up and mount that pulpit. You see what I'm saying? Right. And then preach the word. We got deacons who have fallen. All of us have, have come short of the glory of God. You know, so we have to be careful when we pick our musicians and say what can or cannot happen. If I be real about it, sometimes I have seen effectiveness as a minister locked in the fact that, you know, I don't know, me and my wife just finished arguing, you know, and now I'm back to get in this church and I'm like, okay, forgive me, can we put this aside? Lord, you're going to have to help me today because I'm not, I'm not feeling myself today, you know, right. and I really need God's help. And sometimes that place of humility is where God wants you to be because he has to step in and work and you're not working yourself. And sometimes that's the best place you can be. When you think it's because of your skill level or it's because you done fasted for three days and you are all that and you done been laboring over this word and you going to blow the church out the water today when you preach, you know, and sometimes God will step back and let you have it. And the anointing is unable to flow. And sometimes these people, even musicians, are so humbled by the fact that you would allow them, you know, to offer that gift before the Lord even though there may be some contamination there. You pray for them, you talk to them, you encourage them, you teach them the truth, you be real with them, you know, and, and you know, you, you got to have some standards. I'm not saying have no standards at all, 
But I'm saying you work with them and let God do that work. Sometimes we want to do work that God has to do. And you don't know when and how that work is going to step in and be done. But you, right. you got to open that door, you know, and allow God to work. If, if the only thing keeping the person coming to church is the fact that they offer their craft, you may not let them offer their craft every week, you know, but you, you can bond them with them. All right. I'm going to let you play once a month, but you got to be here every Sunday. Right. So, so, something along those lines, you know, you, 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 you gotta, you gotta work with them. And some churches just really have to work with what they have. You know, sometimes the churches that have the highest standards for musicians are the ones that have 50 other musicians. Right. Yeah. But it's mighty strange how those requirements will begin to trickle down the less musicians you have available to play. Sometimes you just happen to have somebody on the music, you know? Right. So you don't know what God is doing inside of a particular ministry at a particular time. Just be led by him in everything that you do. Be humble, be forgiving, be understanding, pray for it, pray with, you know, and give them goals to work on. When you see them doing well, tell them. When you right. see an area you want them to pull up, tell them, but tell them to pull up. Don't say, I need to pull up in the area so I can play the music. Say, I need to pull up in the area so I can see Jesus. Right, right, right. It right. Is, it help me improve. It, Help me start, as a person. Help me improve as an individual. Um, it's, I, I it's, was watching the. I'm, I'm coming to you, Charles. I was watching. I just want to inter interject this just right quick. I was I was watching a funeral yesterday, and I heard Bishop Jakes to your point say, "Preach in pieces. Preach." You, you know, people. You know, he was he was encouraging. There was a room. They were doing a eulogy for uh, Bishop Ellis, uh, the longtime legend and, and bishop in in. And um, worldwide, you know, this this guy had a phenomenal ministry, but yeah. he was encouraging other preachers to preach in pieces. People mm -hmm. think you have to be all together to do what you do. Play in your instrument in pieces. Well, thank you. Preach in pieces. Play in pieces. I just wanted to interject that because that that was good. What you yeah. what you were just sharing. Go ahead, Charles. H historically, right? So mm -hmm. historically, musicians are naturally clunky. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> Somebody missed that. <laughs> it, it, it is what it is. We're historically cocky. Mm -hmm. And then you mix the cocky musician with the cocky minister, and then you got a bad concoction, which, you know, is usually a battleground for the church. Um, so, I think when we, when both sides, the preacher and the musician, learn to appreciate each other's gift, yeah. Um, I, I, at this point in my ministry, I am my church musician. I am the musician. I have a steel player, but I am the church musician. I am typically the church choir director. Um, my daughter does direct the choir, mm -hmm. but they um, they call me Joe Jackson because they <laughs> fear, uh, from my personality. But the reason I, I brought that up is because in most cases, when there is a need for service in the church, we usually try to find people that we could either afford right. or we feel like they will fit our needs. But that's not always the key. The key is what are you trying to promulgate in your, in your, in your church? Mm. What is it that you're trying to do? Right. Because at the end of the day, all of these entities in the church all are going to have to work together. The preacher is going to have to work. The musician, the musician, will have to work. The choir director, choir director, have to work. All of these areas are going to have to work together. And so, if there's a personality conflict, follow where I'm going with this. Yes. If there's a personality conflict, then we're going to have a problem with church. Right. We're going to have a problem with service. Yeah. We're going to have a problem with how we get ourselves into the presence of God, and. Um, I, I tell you, um, you know, I, I do a lot of reflecting on past experiences. Um, so you, you mentioned Elder Cooper. Um, that's where all of us started. 
Yes. <laughs> That's where, as a matter of fact, a lot of people don't know, but Ella Cooper herself was a musician. She played guitar. She, I mean, she played guitar. She, I mean, she was pretty, pretty good. Yeah. You know, for her season, she was pretty good. Um, and Fort Lauderdale, a lot, when I say a lot, a lot of musicians came through Fort Lauderdale. Yeah. We had the best choir. We had the best musician. Um, and it was because of the personality of the pastor. Mm. Her desire was to have a good music department. Mm -hmm. And she was able to have a good musician department because of her personality. Wow. Because of her personality. Right. And this, this is, this is again, so we're naturally clocky, the pastor and the preacher. We're naturally clocky because this is my church. Right. I get to tell you how I want my church to go. Right. And the musician is, well, this is my gift. I'm going to play my gift. Have, and so you have these two. And, but when you have a person that has the personality to want to see growth, growth happen. Now, let me, let me share this story with you. Um, when I started playing in Fort Lauderdale, mm -hmm. 12, 13 years old, I started playing the organ. Okay. It wasn't the pastor that wouldn't let me play. It was my grandmother. Mm. The pastor was okay with me playing right. on Wednesdays and Friday night. Mm -hmm. My grandmother said the only way that you can play that organ is somebody with an adult figure had to be up on that choir stand with you. I don't know if they thought I was going to tear it up or whatever, but <laughs> when I was. got up there, I, the only person that would sit up there with me when I played that, that organ was my cousin, Renette Dudley. I don't know if Renette remembers this or not, mm. but she would sit up there on Friday night when I got a chance to play. Wow. And each time that I got a chance to play, I gave it my all mm -hmm. until they felt like I was capable enough of playing on a Sunday. Right. Now, when I got my chance to play on a Sunday, it wasn't the organ. Mm. It was a guitar. It was a guitar. You understand what I'm saying? And so my gift started maturing with the guitar because for many, many years, I wouldn't play the organ. Right. I played the guitar. Right. I played the guitar from the state assembly all the way up to the journal assembly. People don't know that. Yeah. Because it's been so many years ago. That's right. But I played the guitar. Sure did. Then during those times, and so I guess the, the the gist of what I'm trying to say is personalities plays a whole lot of important factor when it comes down to how we project ourselves as ministers and as well as musicians. Yeah. Well, it's interesting that you mentioned uh, your grandmother in playing a role in that. And uh, I, I don't know nothing about being no cocky musician. That ain't never been me. But the humility piece probably started at home. You know, there, there was none of that. It was an honor to play, it was a privilege to play. And if my grades wasn't right, my mom would snatch me off the music at this. And as for didn't handle music that day, they just didn't have no music that day. But that's parenting, you know. But I really don't like to see musicians uh, be cocky. I don't like to see them asserting themselves and, 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 and showboating. And I think that feeds into a lot of the issues that hinder the service. It does. It does. My but, point exactly. But I do think it's a natural tendency. And I'll tell you one of the reasons I think it's a natural tendency is because you got to realize and I teach, I tell musicians this all the time. You, you're going to have a hard life, okay, because Satan comes at you with both fists because you took his job. You know, I mean, he was fired from heaven, you know, and every time he sees a musician go forth, you know, under the anointing, it's like a reminder of, of what he left, you know, when he was up there in glory. And the reason he fell was because of, of cockiness, you know, because. Right. 
other two, but ooh, I got this. I'm beautiful. I'm talented. I'm amazing. When I breathe, it's like pipes of music. You know what I mean? And nobody got this but me. And so the devil wants you as a musician, I hope y'all hear me out there, to have the same type of fun that he had, you know, out of cockiness. You got to beat that stuff down. You know it's birthed into the fibers. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> birthed into the fibers. <laughs> Pray for the person who's on there. Pray with somebody else. Help somebody else. You know, rather than talking about and laughing at people, pray into people. I remember being a kid, I was probably five, you know, in the General Assembly, and I was idolized by our organist and piano player. Mm -hmm. And both of them were blind. That was Sammy and Francie. Yes. yes. And they were playing. You know, they were playing on the general assembly, and because I was well behind, you know, they would let me sit on the far side where people were trying to see me, you know, and they would let me sit with them and just watch them play on the amazing skill. And both of them were blind, you know, and it was amazing. Sammy's ear was so sharp, he could tune the piano. Yes. With his ear. Yes. And tune the guitars, too. Yeah. Yes. And yeah, play the train. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would let me sit there, you know, and just watch them mm -hmm. play. And Francine would say, you can't touch the camera, you know. But you can see there, and then Sammy, every now and then, he might say, oh, you hit this note right here and hold it down. Man, if he let me hold that note down, I thought I was really doing something, you know, how I was playing. But, but, but I'm saying that, that the humility with, with which I saw them serve, yes. you know, they never asserted themselves either. You know, they, they were just there to enhance the service in whatever way they could. I was nice. I was approachable. You know, um, all of those things play into developing the personality of a person who can be used by God right. in whatever situation you're in. And, and the main thing is you want God to be able to use you. God can't use you if you're healthy. God can't use you if you're full of pride. And that's why that's why I stand to the, to the, to the it's birthed in our fibers. You know, Satan, Lucifer, is the father of musicians. That's that's him, and 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 to bring that division in the church, it usually starts in the music ministry. Mm, yeah. It usually starts, in it. and so that is why you have skilled musicians. Right, and, and I keep laying into that word because that's where. It's not just about chords. It's just not about knowing when to run, when to drive, and, and when to sort. It's also about mindset. Right. Where's your mind? Right. What is your goal? Mm -hmm. you know, where, where, are you, where are you trying to take this service? Right. You know, and so um, ministry-wise, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a different ball game for this generation now. It's a different ball game. You know, William, when you and I was coming up, you know, it, it's, it's a different ball game. Now, um, every church needs a musician. Mm -hmm. And because there is a demand for musicians, there is a demand for, listen, because there is a demand for musicians, musicians puts out demands. <laughs> right? Yeah. So yeah. We, we use the demands to dictate whether or not we will use our gift. Supply and demand. It's, it, it, <laughs> it's what it that's, is. That's the generation that we're living in now. You know, you got musicians of diamond bezel. Yeah. But for them to sit down on your organ, to sit down on your keyboard, or, or, or your guitar, there are demands. Mm -hmm. And um, at this point, we're in negotiation, so you just got to... <laughs> <laughs> He had to negotiate and made the best man wins. Wow. Help us. Help us. This is this is so good. For those of you all that are on Facebook, I am having such the best conversation ever with um, uh, Charles Ryan, William Carter Jr. Um, it, and for those of you all that are just joining, um, you, you're definitely going to want to listen to this replay um, after um, we go off this live. But um, I'm so excited. And for those of you that are on, make sure you like and share uh, this post. Um, Man, we, we, we really have dived in deep when we talk ministry, when we talk about um, these musicians, the state that they're in, and, and even the leadership 
of the people that they are coming in contact with. Um, it, the, the interesting thing is, you know, we're, we're in a pandemic right now and ministry has really, really shifted. You know, ministry has, has shifted. I kind of want to know how, how has it affected um, where you guys are in ministry? Uh, we're, we're not able, you know, some of us are still, you know, going to the churches, some are not, um, you know, that, and it's really based on decisions. Uh, how, how is that working, you know, for, for us in this time? You know, how's the adjustment been during this pandemic? You know, a, a lot of people are really traditionalist when it comes down to church. You know, we, we do it this one way and let's set it and not change. And, and here we are, every system in America is being forced to change, to alter something about what they do to be effective in this time. You know, no one, no one saw us, I'm sure two, three years ago, walking into Walmart or Kroger's or, or your favorite, you know, Home Depot with a mask on. And it's required to do, you know, where, where are we right now? How has this shifted ministry for us and how we do church? William, I'll start with you. Well, you always start with him. I'm sorry, no, I'm Charles, let me start with you. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Charles. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. No, go ahead, William. I'm, I'm just messing with you. I'm, I'm good, man. Whatever you want to do is fine with me. Go ahead, man. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Yeah. Good. Okay. Listen, um, <laughs> I tell you, it, it's definitely been a transition. Yeah. And it has been. And, um, for me personally, and I, I just have to speak personally, for me personally, it has opened my eyes to a whole new world mm -hmm. of ministry that I didn't know God was going to place in my lap. Come on. Now, um, God called me into the ministry. Yeah. God gave me a gift of pastoring. God gave me gifts in the area of music. Mm -hmm. And what I found throughout my life is that some gift is going to take front stage for a while yeah. and then it will shift and something else will take front stage for a while. Okay. And so there was a time when my, I had to be the musician, you know, and that was front stage, but I was blessing people through that, you know, right. and then there are times when I was in the pulpit, building the church congregation, you know, pouring into those people, that was right. it. And God shifted me in this season into ministry that does not need musicians that does not need a crowd saying amen. Mm -hmm. And I'm able to teach and preach the gospel to people who want to hear it. They, they, they don't have to be there. There's a lot of options out there. If right. they lock into what I'm saying, they're there because they want to be there. And yeah. everybody's not going to respond well to everybody's style of preaching and teaching. Right. So it, God has assembled an audience of a few hundred people mm -hmm. who are receiving what I have to say the way I have to say it. Right. And if that's not a gold mine, I don't know what is. And <laughs> I appreciate, you know, yeah. I appreciate those people. I appreciate the, the people from as far away as 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 Pakistan and, and Uganda, you know, and from the Caribbean islands. People tell me where they're from. You know, people who um, I've, I've talked to, atheists, you know, uh, <laughs> through, through social media, people that don't believe at all, that are thinking twice, talk to backsliders. Wow. who are committed to come back to the Lord. You know, this is a ministry platform on, on a level that I could not get inside of church walls. Wow. I miss the saints. I miss the music. I miss the choir. I love them. You know, I love loving on them, but I am just going with the flow of what God has me doing right now mm -hmm. because it is effective. And even if we do, whenever we do go back to the sanctuary, you know, my prayer is that this platform has to somehow continue because right. I'm reading that I can't reach. There are people who will watch on social media who will never step foot inside the walls. So it's definitely an adjustment. And I just want to encourage people to get in where God wants them to fit in. You know, That's ask right. God what he wants you to do in this season. Instead of crying over spilled milk, you know, do something. It right. has, if God allowed it, it has a purpose. Right. And sometimes we get in with what God is doing and find a way to just be okay with that. Right. There's a book I read um, called The Present. And um, no matter where you are, be all there. Be, be all, all there. there. <laughs> be all there. The present, you know, it, it's 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 kind of like the gift. You know, we don't have we don't have anything except now. Right. You know, 
and our now determines where we are 10 years from now or five years from now or two days from now. Um, it's what we do in the now. Um, Charles. Well, uh, I guess all of you, Dante, William, mm -hmm. and people that know me know that I'm always as transparent as I possibly could. Raw. And uh, <laughs> raw. <laughs> um, it's a bit of a challenge. Yeah. And it's not so much because of the brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. um, um, of course, we, we've had an opportunity to exchange ministry. You've been to Dorchester, I've been to Nashville. Yes, yes. And I think the the dynamics are two different worlds. They are. Uh, for for myself, um, the rural part of the church, and I have a good portion of my my members who are in the rural part, mm. who has not yet developed that. Um, the knack for social media, uh, technology, uh, who are used to going to the church, um, tapping into these phone calls uh, or lives, Zooms, can be a bit challenging for that generation. Yeah, It's an older generation. It's a generation that is not really uh tech savvy right so it's a bit of a challenge for me mm -hmm. uh on the pastoral end i just i alone because i know that a good percentage of the membership are not getting messages because number one they don't know how to tap into zoom right i'm sure it's something that they can learn to do but unfortunately, they choose not to, as William said, you know, everybody have a choice to do what they want to do. Right. So it's a bit challenging for me in that perspective. However, on the flip side of that, it shows us just where people's heart is. Right. Because if you really want something, you'll learn to do what you got to do to get what you got to get. Right. You know what I mean? And so um, I made a statement once, and I think it was really taken out of context. Um, I changed my hours to come on the air because I used the word that I didn't want to be in competition, and that was, I think, taken in the wrong sense in which I used the word. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the context of what I was trying to say was, is at this point, it has, the airways have been flooded with so many preachers. We're all coming in on at the same time. We're all trying to get our messages across to all the people and we want our first time. And so what we end up doing is we end up crashing. Right. And what the people are doing is they're getting a piece of your message, clicking off and getting a piece of somebody else's message, clicking off and getting a piece of somebody else's message, and we just keep, we keep diving from place to place, getting pieces and pieces of a message. Right. Wow. Because we're basically all on <laughs> at the same time, <laughs> right. trying to deliver the, the same, same thing. thing. <laughs> so I, I see that as a challenge, um, you know, I see that as a challenge. I see that as a challenge in many ways. It's all, again, it's a bit of sweet, but I also see it as an opportunity for people to get what they need. Yeah. Because wherein I can't get it from Charles Ryan, mm -hmm. I may be able to get it from William Carter. Right. And wherever I can't get it from William Carter, I may be able to get it from somebody else. So there's a bit of sweet to it all. Um, I tell you one other thing that you know, I know at some point we're going to go back to the church, William, Dante. We're going to go back to the church. Yeah. I know at some point we will eventually get back into the brick and mortar. I think 
the way we do business when we get back into the church, it's going to be a lot different than before we left. Um, there's going to be a definite need for the media ministry to take center stage. Yes. It's gonna, it's gonna be, it's, it's, it's gonna have to be. And for those of us who are behind in time, it's going to be a bit of a challenge trying to get in the race again yeah. because not everybody's going to be able to come back to church once the church doors are open. Right. How do we do that? That's very true. That's very how, true. How, you know, so as a pastor, as a minister, you know, I'm following and listening out for directions, but at the same time, in my mind, I'm thinking, what am I going to have to do to meet the needs? Uh, we're here now. You, you're right, Dante. You, you, <laughs> we're living in the now. Uh, you, you, you're right, William. We're, we're here now. we got to do what we can where, where we are. Right. But for me, I'm a bit of a thinker because I'm thinking, what is tomorrow going to look like? When I get back in my church, tomorrow, whenever that tomorrow is, what is it going to be like? How is it going to alter the way I do service? Am I going to be able to go back in church and do a three-hour service? Am I going to be able to go back in church and, and handle business the way we have always handled business in the rural community? So um, looking at all of that, you know, my wheels turn every day and every night about how, where we are, what we're doing for the plan for tomorrow. Right. Um, so it's been a bit of a challenge. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with, you know, the fact that we do have the social media. I'm, I'm happy about that. I thank God for that every day. Um, every now and then I slip in on somebody else's live just to, to get a word for myself. But at the end of the day, you know, I'm still wondering where do we go from here? Yeah. I, I think it's a looming, uh, you're not alone. You're not alone because we're, we're all, I think at that place of, of where, where, where do we go from here? Yeah. And um, one of my prayers daily, daily is, you know, Lord, in, in the place that I'm, that I'm in now, help me to lead from the future, yeah. but in the now, help me to lead from the future as I'm in the now. Um, yeah because we really don't know <laughs> what tomorrow holds. We're, 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 we're in this pandemic right now. And we, we, we're looking at an election and so much controversy that's going on right now. We, we have this Black Lives Matter movement going on, our racial, this racial in inequality that is really just taking heights um, like I've never seen in our history before. And you, know, you think we're done with something and it just resurfaces, but it resurfaces on a different level. And, and, um, and that is one of the reasons Dante Pardon me for cutting you off, but that is one of the reasons why, as the younger generation of leaders, Jake said something yesterday, uh, I hope I can get it right. He said the giants are dying <laughs> and we're replacing them with midgets. That's what he said. And, yeah, and, and the reality is, is these giants were thinkers. They yes. weren't just Jake thinking for their generation. Right, they were thinking they ahead. Were, they were thinking ahead. Mm -hmm. And the younger the generation gets, we have to think ahead. We have to position ourselves as leaders today for the future generation. We have to begin training our minds for the future. Yes. You know, we take one day at a time, definitely. But at the same time, as leaders, we have to begin thinking about what tomorrow is going to look like look like for the next generation yeah. and i look at our church every single day the resources and amount of people that we have like musicians we're just the best musicians are sitting on the back seat they haven't even, they haven't even touched the keyboard yet so talk about it and the same is for the church leaders wow some of the best leaders are sitting in the back of the church yep not given a chance. Not, they don't even know that they're leaders. They don't, they, but nobody's developing them. 
And you know, I think about I think about, about I think about leadership as developing the next leader. I think about us as leaders taking somebody under our wings, managing them, yes. managing their resources, helping them to develop. Listen, I'm telling you, I mean, musicians, well, 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 but preachers, I was, I had the privilege, my mother, my mother sent me mm -hmm. to Alfonso Jackson. I didn't have a, she didn't ask me whether I wanted to go. I'm sending you to Alfonso Jackson. Yes. Summer after summer after summer, I went to Alfonso Jackson. Alfonso Jackson developed my ministry. Wow. On the second time I came back from North Carolina, Ella Cooper asked me to preach that Sunday night. And listen, my style of preaching was three minutes tops, mm -hmm. four minutes if I really felt adventurous, mm -hmm. and that was it. But that night, my whole ministry changed. Ella Cooper walked up to me. She said, I know that you've been with Bishop Jackson. I was developed because he sat down, he modeled what ministry should be, not only for me now, but for me in the future. And so when you develop these leaders, give them the platform, because one last point, and, and I guess we'll get ready for all the, the nasty grams and everything. <laughs> the, the, the challenge was, and the challenge today is, I want leaders like me. And that's, that's not where we are. Yeah. If I get everybody like me, then my church is never going to grow. Right. That's the truth. That's the truth. If everybody's like me, if yeah. I cannot embrace the Peters in our congregation, yeah. <laughs> you know who the Peters are, the people that speak out, that speak up. If right. I cannot embrace the Peters, in our congregation, we're not going to be able to move this church where it needs to go. That's right. Isn't it sad that this pandemic caught us off guard? Even though we've been reading about it in the Bible for years, that something like this could happen. Right. We were caught off guard. And some of us who put our young people who were tech savvy, you know, who wanted us to step it up a notch, who wanted us all in the technological aspect of what's going on. Some of us who put all of that aside and on the back burner had no choice but to go back and grab some of those same people mm -hmm. and have them help us figure it out and, and, and get it together. Right. God is never caught off guard. Sometimes God will put right in front of us what we're going to need to move forward and to get to the next level, but it's up to us to recognize it, to embrace it, to put it in place right. and use it. You know, I mean, I think it's beautiful. We, we were laughing about it recently, but it's beautiful that my younger people are teaching my older saints how to get on Zoom, you know, um, how to conduct themselves when, when they go live, you know, and it, it's bridging some gaps, hallelujah, that we've been crying about, you know, and begging God to help us bridge this gap between the older ones and the younger ones. God has given us a, a means by which they can work together. And I, th I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. I think it has been beautiful. But yeah, God is always ready for the future. He's ready for the next level. And he gives us what we need to get there. We yeah. just got to open our eyes, yeah. you know, and put it, put it in place and grab some of these people, you know, that want to do some, some, some new things and some innovative things that's going to help us to prepare because we're there now and we're not going to be able to ever completely go back. Yeah. The world has changed. Ministry has changed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, we're there. We're there. And I, I'm, I'm so grateful for everybody that is following us on, on Facebook. Thank y'all for sticking with us. This is some great conversation that we're having. Like and share this post. This is some good stuff today. Um, you all have given a lot of solutions to a lot of the, the different problems. And, and, and Charles, I don't, I don't know if you realize it, man, but it, just even in, in the way you, you said your mother did um, for you in sending you to someone to, to help develop you in ministry so that you, you were leading from the future, even then, you know, as a, I, I, I can't remember how old you were when you started, but, you know, to, to be able to have, have someone pour into you 
from at a level, I'm sure that was far advanced than, than where you were at that time. To, to take on all this stuff that you probably didn't even understand or know, to, to, to soak all this wisdom and knowledge and understanding of what to do, how to do it, where to go, um, so on and so forth, and, and be able to use that to, to pulpit yourself into the future, then, you know, and be effective. That, that's a start. That's a start because a lot of us are not modeling anybody that's successful into, you know, the, and I'll say it like this. I only follow people that were better than me and were twice as 10 times as, as, as good as I am in doing whatever it is that I was trying to do. I never follow somebody that was either on my level or just, you know, mediocre. No, I, I wanted somebody who's been there. I wanted somebody who's got something that that they can impart to me and upon me and give me more insight, give me more wisdom so that I can, you know, uh, 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 get, climb higher, you know, because the, the, the thing about it is I think about when I first started and I think about my first, first lesson, um, Charles, and I, I go, always go back to this story, even when I talk, talk to other musicians, one lesson, one lesson. And every time, you know, William, every time I see Charles and we, we joke and I play, and, and we have a good service and, and, and we cutting up after service. You know how we do. Um, man, you, you remember who taught you? <laughs> remember who taught you? you Somebody you know, got from Jackson. Hey, man. <laughs> but, but, the, but, the thing, but the thing about it is, is that it was, it, was, it was one lesson, but it was what I got. It was the impact. It was the it, it, and it sustained me. It's the impact. It's the imp. Yeah. <laughs> That's Let me share something I, with I've you. I've never pushed kids away when they come up. You know, or, or to hang out on the music, want to sit beside you, want you to show them a chord or whatever. You gotta <laughs> do that. Yeah. You gotta do that. That means a lot. That those that sixty seconds is golden to them. Yes. You know, and and it means a lot to them. And so, I think it's important that we burn both ends of that candle. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Some people have the outgoing personality, you know, and they're going to latch on to you. Hey, man, show me this, show me that. Mm -hmm. But you always have those who are a little bit more withdrawn, you know, and they'll see somebody right. that they would like to have that person pour into them, but they're not bold enough to step up and do that. When right. you see that person staring at you, you know, invite them over. You know, right. hey, you, you want to come over here and watch me for a minute? You feel it. You know, and they, they appreciate that, you yes. know. Make it your goal to pour into other people. That's that's how that's how we keep it rolling. Yeah. Let me let me, let me share this with you. Mm -hmm. Talking about the impact, um, and um, I'm always appearing to be much older than I am. <laughs> um, fifty three, and for me, fifty three is a long time. But the twenty first of next month, October. Uh, if life lasts long enough, will put me 40 years in the ministry. Wow. 40 years. Started preaching at 13. Um, so I've had a, 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 a span of time where God used me in various capacities. But here, here's what I want to want to share. Two weeks ago, we were, my children were working on a, a, um, a business project. Mm -hmm. And um, I went to um, a sale, a garage sale, um, at an office building and um, walked into the building. And um, the lady that was hosting the, the sale, you know, I had the grandbaby and we were just sitting there talking. And she looked at me and she said, are you a pianist? I say, yes, I am. She say, I think you sang and played at my wedding. Hmm. She said, did you, did you used to play for the MUSC gospel choir? I said, I did. <laughs> she said, yes. She said, I know that you should say because I was, singing on the gospel choir and you and a gospel choir sung at my wedding. She said, let me pull my mask down so you can see me. 
And um, to be quite honest with you, I had to work a little bit to remember her face because you're talking about almost 15 years ago, okay? As we begin to talk, it all came back to me. Yes, Mount Pleasant, blah, 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 I remember. At this point, my mind went back 20 years. 20 years, Dante William. Mm -hmm. My mind goes back to where people say I impact their lives. Right. But the reality was they impact my life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because as I went out singing to all of these places and playing and participating in all of these community at, uh, events, I'm thinking you are giving me an experience that I would not be able to get anywhere else in this world. Right. I am crossing cultural lines, going into areas of worship, learning other people's style of worship. Mm -hmm. So when I get into a place where I have to go and sit down, I know how to behave myself. Right. The impact that some of these things have taught us has really we're not the ones that are impacting. We're actually the ones being impacted. Right. Right? Right. Which prepares us and puts us in position, William, to be future leaders. Yeah. Right. Because if only you can lead your own, you're not a good leader. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you can only lead your own, Right. It does not make you a good leader. Yeah. Try getting into an area, William. Try getting into an area wow. where culturally you do things different. Yeah. You say things different. You then tell me about leadership. Right. If you're not willing to change, you'll never become that. That's this is my point. And so if you're not willing to learn, you'll it, never become that. You got to be in a position to sit down and learn. Educate yourself with good people so that when it's time for you to get out there, you know how to behave yourself in the house of God, whether it's in the Keep Dominion, the house of God, which is the church of the living God. You know how to behave yourself, right. whether it is in the Keep Dominion or outside of the Keep Dominion. If you don't have that proper education, if you don't have those resources available to you, and then when you get them, you teach them. To the next generation, yeah. which helps us to get one step closer to crossing racial. Don't take going back to that that discussion about the injustices yeah. that we're facing in this world. Right now, one of the biggest segregation um, problems that we have is on Sunday morning. Come on, church. Church is the biggest segregation there is. It is. And we and we allow that segregation, and we think it's good. We think it's okay. We think it's supposed to be that way. Do you think heaven is going to be segregated by race? And this is why and we call the black church or the white church, or right. Right. this generation, this generation of leaders, young know, people like you and I, uh, William, this culture that we have developed, we're going to have to shift. We got. We're going to have to shift this, and that's why, again, going back to. The, the, the statement about this pandemic, what this pandemic is teaching us, we're not learning. We're not learning it yet. <laughs> That's why we got another four months. Ooh. Because we haven't learned it yet. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> so when we learn it, <laughs> we may be able to go back to the church. Right. But we haven't, we, we we haven't learned it. <laughs> you, have, you have to be spoon fed. Yeah, we, we we still we still trying we still trying to learn something that we should have learned a hundred years ago, but right. unfortunately we haven't. But we got another four months to learn it and see how we get through that. We anyway. learning it in pieces, that day. Right, well, right. Well, <laughs> this is this is so good. Listen, I I um I know I, I so respect you guys' time, and and for those of you all that are still watching on Facebook, thank you all for just staying with us. This has been one rich conversation, um, one, um, just one conversation about leadership, about ministry, about music um, that is really needed in this time. And um, I really hope this sparks other, um, other conversations 
not only in our churches, but our, in our community about if we look in the mirror, just individually, what are you doing? What are you doing, you know, as a person to, to, to better yourselves, to, to lead from the future right now, you know, um, there's so much that each one of us can do. It's just a matter of how you use whatever it is that God has given you to do it. So I, I'm again, I, I so respect you guys time, man. We, we're going to have to do this again. Y'all, y'all, y'all just, this, this is good. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me and being a part of this. I really Listen, appreciate it. I, I wouldn't have it no other way. I wouldn't have it any other way. So if, if you, if, before we go, I always love to leave and you guys have just left so many, so much wisdom and so many nuggets for us to really think about and, 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 and um, uh, really reflect on. If there's anything you guys want to leave the leaders, the, the, the musicians, the, the pastors, the preachers, whomever, um, that's watching the anybody that's may may not even be a part of a church organization and just wanting to be better. Uh, I'll start with you, Charles. <laughs> I'll start with you, Charles. Hi, what 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 would you want to leave them? Um, I love to end my show like this because I, at the end of the day, I, I always want to leave application something for people to think about, some something for people to really, um, really think you know hone in on how can, what what did I get from this talk that will make me different and walk out of this conversation thinking about myself thinking about what i'm doing to serve people and do it better than what i did the the only thing that i have to share um, from the perspective of leadership is if all of your people that you are training and putting in place looks like you then we're really not going anywhere wow that's all i got hey that's that's wisdom that's enough right there that's that's wisdom <laughs> william <laughs> yeah. man i just i what i really want to leave with people is this is a shift yes it's a major shift it's a hard shift but it is a shift indeed and anytime god allows a shift you gotta move if you don't move you know, you, you're not going to make it. So please, please, please get with the shift and just ask God, you know, where he wants you to fit in. I, I mean, none of us can do what we've been doing, you know, the way we've always been doing it. And that's painful. I know musicians, money, it's, it's been suffering, you know, and all of that. But ask God, you know, what do you want me to do? What type of shift? Open your eyes because it's, you know, it's something out there for you to do. It's some way to be effective. It's a way to be successful. And, uh, and you can make it, you know, and if, if you look at the word shift in and of itself, you know, the first two letters are SH, right? Yes. You know, right. <laughs> we're talking, we're fussing, we're complaining, but you got to be quiet to hear from God. You know, the next two letters are if, you know, if I actually do something, if I actually move, if I actually try, you know, uh, some, something may actually happen for me here, you know, so let's, let's get with that shift, you know. And, uh, and let God do something great. I believe he's still doing great things in the midst of the pandemic. Yes, he is. This is one of them. And thank you, Dante, for allowing me to be a part of this platform. Yes, and thank you. Amazing. Thank, thank you for you. opening up the door. I'm, I'm just honored, you know, to, to be a part. Yes, sir, definitely. Thank Absolutely. You. Man, I, I love you guys, man. And, and love you more, man. Love we, you back. We're going to do this again. We have to do this again. Certainly. Um, Y'all stay where you are. Um, for those of you that are following on Facebook, thank you so much for joining in this week.